Hey guys, let's get more news about Steelers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Shocking Justin Fields report emerges from Steelers camp. The Chicago Bears have some difficult decisions to make about the quarterback position this offseason. They were deciding between keeping Justin Fields or shipping him out to select Caleb Williams. Chicago ended up rolling with the latter and has a new signal caller under center in Williams. As for Fields, he was sent to the Pittsburgh Steelers and has hit work cut out for him. The Steelers also have Russell Wilson on the squad and the latest report isn't the best news for Fields. Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin was speaking with reporters on Wednesday and he revealed that there is a QB competition happening in Pittsburgh, but Wilson is currently QB1. He added that Wilson is dealing with a calf injury and won't play in the preseason bout on Friday against the Houston Texans. Instead, Fields will get the starting nod. This will be a great opportunity for Fields to push for the starting gig. Although starters won't be playing for long, the Ohio State product needs to find a way to impress the coaching staff to make a jump for the starting gig. Since entering the league in 2021, the 25-year-old struggled to be a consistent passer, relying on his athleticism to make plays with his legs. Across 40 games, Fields threw for 6,674 yards, with 40 passing touchdowns and 30 interceptions. He also rushed for 2,220 yards and 14 scores. But for him to be a starting quarterback in this league, he needs to develop more as a passer, and it sounds like he still needs some work in that department. If he wants to have a shot at starting this year, he needs to up his play during preseason. There are reasons that the Pittsburgh Steelers only spent a conditional future sixth-round pick on trading for QB Justin Fields. While he is a former first-round draft pick, he comes with his share of warts and a horrible win-loss record. Yes, the Chicago Bears moved on because they were drafting QB Caleb Williams, but they still gave up on him. And they had legitimate reasons to do so, he has had shortcomings in his game that hold him back. But the Steelers are working on these things with them, and there are some positive developments. Justin Fields talked about some of his areas of growth lately on the WDV Morning Show. I would say just uncovering pressures. You can see with our defense, post-snap coverages, and stuff like that, Fields said. Our defense does a great job of disguising pre-snap coverages. Just doing that, and really just the command of the offense. Going up to the line of scrimmage with the process, saying the play out, looking at the front, handling the shifts and motions. Hayward expecting next step for DeMarvin Leal now that he understands the playbook a lot more. The Pittsburgh Steelers drafted DeMarvin Leal in the third round of the 2022 NFL Draft. While he has fallen short of expectations so far, his teammates and coaches are optimistic that 2024 will be different. Even Leal acknowledges that he has grown up some this year, becoming more of a professional. For Cameron Hayward, it's more than that. I wouldn't even say he was rookie Leal, Hayward said on the WDV Morning Show, pushing back a bit on the framing of a question about Leal's purported immaturity last year. I think now he understands the playbook a lot more. The thing with Leal is he provides versatility to be able to play in or outside, Hayward noted. Leal has played some outside linebacker during training camp this year, having done so as a rookie. He's not your traditional four technique, but he's rushing the passer well, he knows what he's doing. He doesn't seem like he's rattled by the playbook. I think he's just feeling more comfortable in what he's doing. The Steelers have a crowded defensive line room this year, however, and he is no longer on a proverbial scholarship. With two seasons under his belt, Leal has to earn his roster spot this year, no longer resting on potential. A third-year player out of Texas A&M, DeMarvin Leal spent much of the first half of the Steelers' season active last year with Cameron Hayward injured. Once Hayward returned, however, Leal's role dwindled, even spending many games a healthy scratch. From Week 10 on last season, Leal did not dress for half of the Steelers' games. 
he only played 26 snaps in total over the final 10 games, including the postseason, never more than nine in a game. Isaiah Loudermilk regularly and consistently played ahead of him, as did Armin Watts. While the Steelers lost Watts in free agency, they replaced him with Dean Lowry and drafted Logan Lee. Lowry should be the top backup, but Lee will compete with Loudermilk and Leal for potentially one roster spot. The Steelers have Hayward, Larry Ogunjobi, and Keanu Benton in the starting lineup, with Lowry and Montravius Adams as their top reserves. There is no guarantee that the Steelers carry seven linemen, so Leal has to claim the final spot. The fact that the kickoff rules are different this year makes him a candidate to play special teams. In this case, Leal can benefit tremendously from his athleticism, which hasn't always been an asset as a defensive lineman. On the whole, the reports about DeMarvin Leal have been pretty consistently positive from Steelers' camp. Still, one wonders why the team isn't giving him more high-quality reps, especially considering Lowry is still on the PUP list and Hayward gets veteran days off. 49ers trade price for Pittsburgh Steelers to land Brandon Ayuk revealed. As the Brandon Ayuk saga takes turns, three facts remain the most important. First, Ayuk wants to be a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Second, Ayuk and the San Francisco 49ers hold specific leverage points. Third, the compensation must satisfy the 49ers. With those in mind, the Steelers seem to have the Ayuk part done, but they have to end up trading enough to land him. So, what would that cost? It will certainly at least cost a few draft picks, but Diana Russini of The Athletic believes that the 49ers would like a wide receiver in return, though they are open to other positions. In other words, the Steelers have not yet met what the 49ers want. The only possible wide receiver the Steelers could move to land Ayak is George Pickens, but that will not happen, as the Steelers intend to pair Ayak and Pickens together. New offensive coordinator Arthur Smith has not had a duo like during his time as offensive coordinator, and even though Van Jefferson and Calvin Austin III are having strong training camps, Ayuk and Pickens would create a dynamic duo for Smith to work with as the play caller. That is what the Steelers want to do here, but it appears that Steelers general manager Omar Khan and John Lynch seem to be in a standoff for now. Either the Steelers will have to pay the necessary compensation or the 49ers will have to find a third team that can come into the picture and give them the player they desire with the Steelers' picks. Until that happens, it appears that the Steelers and 49ers will remain stuck in the mud on the IAC negotiations as the Steelers continue to hold their leverage in the entire situation against the 49ers and their asks. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Brandon AIYUK? Leave your opinion in the comments.